StarCast 5, presented by CarShield, July 29th to 31st in Nashville, Tennessee at the Nashville Fairgrounds. Loaded with stage shows including Renee Paquette's Sessions with the American Dragon, Brian Danielson, Soraya, Turning the Page, The Horsemen reunite on stage for one last ride, and Bret Hart's look back at 30 years later on his SummerSlam Classic. And of course, StarCast will be capped off by Ric Flair's Last Match. Follow the story leading up to the last match over at RicFlair'sLastMatch.com. Tickets and information available at StarCast.com. Daniel Garcia versus Brian Danielson. So many, many, many years ago, Brian Danielson won the uh, uh, world championships at WrestleMania, ultimately had to forfeit them due to a head injury, and then came back later uh, uh, before his retirement. But he came back later. And when he came back after that, um, he came back full bore. And I remember talking to you about it, and uh, my point at the time was, listen, if he's cleared, he's cleared, and he's just gonna, he's going to do matches. If he's not cleared, he won't he won't wrestle. But this is the same story. He missed some time due to a head injury, and as soon as he was cleared, he's cleared. And he just came back and had a fight with Daniel Garcia here. Despite all the sports entertainment Daniel Garcia wanted to do, they had a fight. Daniel Bryan was t- uh, Daniel- Bryan Danielson was taking nothing easy. He is back all the way back. Yeah, he's but you not. know what, Vinny? Yeah. I know you're all cocky about the point you just made here, but I'm not cocky. We just saw we just saw this exact same thing with Adam Cole. Adam Cole had a match with uh, Samoa Joe, and he suffered an injury, and uh, he was cleared, and then he was immediately injured in yeah. his very next big match. That's fine because I- even though he was cleared, he wasn't really ready to go. Well, that's and that happens sometimes. My point is that that's how Brian Danielson was wrestling. I'm merely describing. Well, yes, it. that's how he that that's how okay, he then. works. That's how his brain works. But mm. my point is that you know, just being cleared is not necessarily an indication that you need to go out there and try and kill yourself the first time back. This is, by the way, the same guy that got a neck injury and came back and decided he was going to test his neck. Yeah, <laughs> he does have a track Don't do that, this kind everybody. of thing, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. Do not test your neck. So eventually, it does in fact backfire on Brian because he hits a missile drop kick, but upon landing on his back in the middle of the ring, he appears to knock himself batty. And they cut to a fan who is doing the shocked face, and Chris Jericho on commentary screams, Look at that guy! What a mark! I did howl when he called this guy a mark. What a mark. Well, the guy was, I mean, listen, the guy's supposed to be worried about it. And in storyline, Daniel Bryan really hurt his head, or Bryan Danielson. God damn that fucking name. They, this fucking guy was Bryan Danielson for years and years and years. They sent him to WWE. They changed his fucking name to Daniel Bryan. It takes me three years to stop calling him Bryan Danielson. Now he goes back to being Bryan Danielson, and I fucking call him Daniel Bryan 90% of the time. Anyway, yeah. you know when he landed and he and he sold his neck and head, I met, I started getting emails immediately. A bunch of people that were, you know, they I was just taken out of the match. I just couldn't get into the match anymore. I was worried. I didn't like it. I don't like playing off head injuries. And listen, if you were watching this match, knowing this guy was coming off a concussion, and he did a spot and didn't get up, and you were worried, and you couldn't enjoy the match anymore, fine. I'm not going to argue that one bit. That's That's totally... That's a totally believable, understandable thing. But dudes come back from every conceivable injury of every conceivable body part. And usually when they do, their opponent goes after that injury. If if Miro tears out his knee and he comes back with a knee brace, it's going to be part of the story. If somebody... Uh, breaks their elbow and comes back. Someone's going to work over their elbow with arm bars. Daniel Bryan broke his brain. He suffered a concussion, it appears. And uh, I see no problem with putting that injury into the story of his match. And it made for a fantastic story. I mean, the entire story of the match was built around him coming off this injury, not being 100%, which did lead to two problems. Number one, in storyline, why was the guy cleared? And uh, also in storyline, this referee should be disbarred from refereeing. Because oh, when point. a guy hits the ropes and just collapses and he can't get up, you you have to call the fucking match. It's over. Instead, he let this guy get his ass handed to him with a, with a head injury. But anyway, point of it is, you know, this made the match better. 
If it made you uncomfortable, I'm not going to say that you know you're stupid or anything like that. That that that's completely believable. And, and if you wanted to turn it off after that, that's fine. But uh, I don't think it's any different than working any other body part. So that is exactly what happened. Uh, Garcia started working the head through. He, so. <laughs> Again, the whole story is this guy came back too early from his brain injury. Now he's having his brain re-injured. Garcia hits a DDT on the cement. And we go to commercial break. I'm like, commercial break? Is he alive or dead? Can we clarify that before we go to commercial? We went to commercial. We come back. Turns out he's alive. He was bleeding. He starts making his comeback. His comeback is just awesome. They're trading, trading strikes. They're trading submission holds. They're trading the MMA, the hammer and anvil elbows. There's a very violent strike exchange, and uh, Danielson hits the knee strike. He goes for the label lock, but Garcia gets the ropes, and they're out of the ring. As they're trying to get back in, the mysterious hand of doom appears from under the apron, grabs Danielson and distracts him. And this lets Garcia hit a pile driver and a sharpshooter, and he cranks that sharpshooter back, and Danielson passes out, and Daniel Garcia wins. And it's revealed the hand of doom was, in fact, the hand of Jake Hager, and he's celebrating in crooked, yes, but Daniel Garcia got a win over Brian Danielson. A hell of a wrestling match. You know what's match. funny, too? They they do these kind of distraction finishes in, in WWE all the time. Guy gets distracted. The other guy pins him. Sometimes it's an upset. And uh, nobody ever buys it. They never buy it. And I think one of the reasons they never buy it is because they've been trained to never buy it. Like, everyone knows if, if uh, you know, Ronda Rousey gets pinned by Aaliyah, she's just going to get her win back the next week. It's going to be, it's not going to mean anything for Aaliyah's career. Everybody knows that. But uh, for whatever reason in AEW... And because the fans know that wins and losses matter and things are usually, not always, but usually followed up on. I mean, even though there was an interference spot and a distraction spot, Daniel Garcia hitting that pile driver, putting the dude in the sharpshooter, these fucking fans were going crazy. They were going crazy when he was in that sharpshooter. They're screaming at him to get the ropes. And man, when the referee rang the bell, you could just tell that these fans were shocked. They could not believe that, of all people, Brian Danielson, the guy who has put over more people than anybody except The Rock in the last 20 years, they couldn't believe that he lost to Daniel Garcia, which is a testament to how they have booked uh, Brian Danielson in AEW. And, uh, and how they book in general, that even though there was a distraction and interference, the fans still saw this as, like, by far the biggest win of Daniel Garcia's career. And they, they, they treated this like it was a monumental occasion on Dynamite. So even before the finish, I was just watching this match going, this fucking Brian Danielson is just out of this world. Oh, yeah. And Daniel Garcia is great. Uh -huh. And this match was just absolutely fucking great. And then the finish with the upset and the reaction of the crowd. Man, if I didn't think it before this match, this was one of the best Dynamites probably oh. that they've ever had. It, Top yes, to yes. bottom. This is one of the best Dynamites they've ever ran. Every segment was a winner. With the, with the, with the, even, the, the, even the knee segment was fun. I didn't think it's wacky he's going to get a title shot now after getting massacred like this. But for, for the television show I was watching, it was a fun segment. Everything was good, and a lot of stuff was great. So... As you noted, we opened and closed this uh, episode of Dynamite with pay-per-view main event quality matches. And uh, I asked my Twitter followers just a couple hours ago, so this is, you know, late to the party, but which one was better? And I'm surprised how dominant this is, but the Danielson match is, wishing, is winning by more than two to one. Well, I think also partly because there was an upset. Uh, maybe that's As why. As opposed to the Moxley match, where the Moxley match was great, but you knew who was winning. Yeah. And it's exactly what happened. It may be, it I may don't be think forgotten anybody the thought yeah. that Daniel Garcia... And by the way, uh, circling back to what I said at the beginning of the show. So, you know, one of the reasons the show was so great, it was not only because they did not have to promote a Ring of Honor pay-per-view or a Forbidden Door pay-per-view in the middle of a Dynamite show. But also, for the last two months, they've had to build up two other shows. So this was the first time that they had to shoot a whole bunch of angles to set the table for the rest of the summer. So you're not going to see a show like this every week. It would be impossible. But they had to 
set up a bunch of different things leading to uh, their quake at the lake and and eventually all out. So this was a this was a very very good. You know what it was, and and I don't mean this in a negative way because you know they were usually not bad. This was a Russo reset show without the Russo. It yeah, was a I shouldn't call it a reset show. It was a setting the table show. They had to they they finished two months of dealing with a whole bunch of other stuff, and now they had to set the table, shoot some angles, split some people up, start some new feuds, and we had two great matches. You're not gonna see a dynamite like this often, but you will see it every now and then. And uh this was a fantastic example of this of this concept. What a great show. This is how the show begins, really. Asuka does a back kick. Camera cut. She does a back fist. Camera cut. She starts to run. Camera cut. She hits a hip attack. Camera cut. She drops to her knees. Camera cut. She throws a kick. Camera cut. She stands up and screams. Camera cut to people brawling on the floor. I was furious. Do you understand? I wanted to shut the show off and not watch anymore. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.